Welcome to Horror Review Sunday. Let's talk about my favorite revenge movie and my favorite uh, South Korean film, and that is I Saw the Devil. Yeah, this is a horror movie. Anyone who says otherwise is wrong. This is a horror film with action and suspense, and it's a, it's a mixed bag. It's got everything. It's even got a little bit of humor in one scene, and it's just a blast. This movie is almost two and a half hours long, and it doesn't feel like it at all to me. This movie just keeps going, and it's a masterpiece to me. So I have nothing negative to say. The only thing I question in this movie is how accurate is it that this device works this way, the GPS in the stomach, the microphone, how like good the audio is. It's like in his stomach, and you can hear what he's saying, like he's speaking right into it. And, like, you can even, the guy can hear, like, people talking in the room with him clearly, too. So that's the only thing I question is how realistic is that. But that's it. So uh, the positives for this movie is I really like the revenge plot here and its its uniqueness. Because usually in a revenge movie, something bad happens to somebody. And then they spend the rest of the movie trying to get to that person. And they usually get to them towards the very end and kill them or not. You know, usually they kill them, especially in American movies. But in this one, this guy has something wrong done to him. He gets to the guy who, who is responsible within like the first like 30 minutes or so, and then the next two hours is him fucking with this guy again and again and again, catch and release, just hunting him. He's his prey now. Like This guy was the monster, but he's created a monster, and this guy... He's getting revenge the whole time, weakening him more and more, trying to get him to feel what, you know, his fiance felt. Because, you know, this guy killed his fiance in the opening, who he was just recently engaged to, who was pregnant as well, on her birthday. So if anything's going to set this guy off to want to do all this, that's how you do it. Like, if you want to set a guy off to go on this rampage, that's what you do. You kill his pregnant fiance on her birthday while he's too busy working. So he feels so much guilt. And that's another thing. Like the characters in this movie, the way they're written, the depth. It's just these characters are amazing. The villain in this movie is cold-blooded. He is the devil. That's what the title refers to is him. He is the devil. He has like no emotions other than like anger. He just feels cheated by the world and just has major anger issues and he just wants to feel like he's in control. He hates old people. It seems like he has a real hatred for old people as well in this movie. He's mainly killing women, but he seems to have a hatred towards old people because every time he encounters one, he always refers to their age, like his parents. You know, what are the old folks doing here? And then the pharmacist guy, he's like, you old fuck. Like he, just, he hates old people. He hates women. He hates feeling small and belittled. He wants to feel like a big man, and this guy who he fucked with is the wrong person to fuck with because he puts him in his place. He's like, you're nothing. And I love that this protagonist isn't like any other protagonist. Like, this guy knows what he's doing. He's smart. He knows how to fight. So it's not like he has to, like, train. And it's like that trope where they have to, like, first go through like all kinds of training like this guy already knows how to kick ass and he does almost all the right things but he's not perfect he actually makes mistakes so i like that like this guy's not you know flawless with his plan like it falls apart at one point you know bad things start happening to other people and he has to kind of pay the price for that like he now he has extra guilt that's weighing down on him it's just a brilliant movie it's got gorgeous cinematography the way it's shot the lighting the colors the saturation the way the film looks it's beautiful and the winter atmosphere just perfect for this kind of movie the dark cold mood and tone of the film it's just a brutal movie it's, it gets really graphic at times too lots of bloody moments and the gore in the movie is phenomenal like aftermath gore and beheadings they look realistic as hell. And the severed head they find, it's very convincing. And so, yeah, you got bloody mayhem mixed with some action. So, like I said, it's kind of like an amalgam of genres. You got, like, the revenge thriller with horror and cannibals and fucking, you know, just everything together that I love. So, and the score to the movie, the music, very powerful, very intense, and just very effective. 
And yeah, I mean, I could go on and on, but I feel like I've, if I haven't sold you on it yet, I don't know what else to say. This movie is just a masterpiece from every aspect of filmmaking, the effects, the characters, the writing, the dialogue, the pacing to me, it just everything works in this movie. I've seen it three times now and I can't wait to watch it again. I, this is a movie I can watch again and again once a year, probably during the winter. I feel like that would be a good time to watch it because of the winter uh, atmosphere and the setting. It's got a lot of snow, and I like the contrast of like the blood in the snow and the bodies are being dragged across. It's even on the back here. You see the body being dragged across the snow. Always makes for a good visual in a horror movie, and lots of good visuals in this film. And so, yeah, I mean... It's a fantastic movie, so final thoughts. If you're looking for a foreign film, a South Korean film to check out, if you want to get into South Korean films, this is a fantastic place to start. If you're looking for a revenge movie, this is a great revenge movie to watch. So when it comes to I Saw the Devil, this movie to me is a masterpiece. All right, time for a spoiler discussion. So in the opening, the guy is too busy working, and his girlfriend, her car breaks down, and the k killer pops up. His name's Jang, and he's breaking into the car. He hits her in the head with a hammer a few times and drags her off. She tells him that she's pregnant, and he has, like, no hesitation. He doesn't care that she's pregnant. He just chops her head off right then and there. He's just after her organs, I guess, to give to his friend, who's the cannibal, so I guess he's killing and raping. We find that out also he rapes his victims before he kills them. We don't see rape in the movie. Um, there's a couple of moments where it kind of starts to go there, but then it gets interrupted by our main character, uh, Kim. But he rapes his victims and then chops them up, and I'm thinking he gives the body parts to his friend, the cannibal, who is living at this mansion that he broke into and killed the owners there. So yeah, you got cannibals in this movie too. So that's pretty crazy. That's when things get extra insane. As if you thought the movie wasn't already brutal enough and just chaotic. It gets to that and you're like, holy shit, there's cannibals thrown into this also. It's just one thing after another. There's all kinds of crazy people in South Korea. Like the scene where he gets in the cab. That's another great scene. The way it's shot, the 360, amazing. You just gets in a cab with two random strangers who just so happen to be psychopaths who killed the cab driver and they're going around picking up people and killing them just like him. So it's like he meets people that are just like him. And he just starts stabbing them a bunch and the throat and the blood spraying all over the windshield. It's just a bloody, awesome scene. And so they find the wife's head in the river. And like I said earlier, the gore and just the effects are very convincing. The, the head looked pretty damn real and the ear was found by these kids who look like they're just hanging out underneath a bridge burning stuff like that's what kids do in south korea they just go underneath bridges and they burn stuff so he gets the gps mic and he's offered like two months vacation but he's like i only need two weeks because he's got that much confidence in himself he's like i can get this guy in two weeks that's all i need and there's only four suspects so he's got a very small list of people to go check out and I like that it's the third one you know like usually in other movies he would get to the last person on the list and that would be the one he's actually looking for but in this movie it's the third person on his list that's the guy he's looking for so I thought that was interesting kind of adds a little bit of realism to the movie because you know in other movies it would just be like he has to get to the very bottom of the list and there now he found the guy but not in this case in the line who broke your balls that cracks me up every time because the second guy or the first guy he goes to interrogate, he's like looking at blurred, censored Korean porn, and he starts hammering his balls. And then the cop later on is like, who broke your balls? And this guy's got a huge guillotine in his torture dungeon, his lair, and he gets that used on him poetically at the end of the movie. So I like that. I wonder why he didn't just use that on the girl in the opening why he chose to chop her head off with the uh, meat cleaver instead. I guess he likes to use other weapons every now and then instead of just using that guillotine every time. And I love that after he kills somebody, 
he just starts playing guitar right afterwards. Like, it's no big deal. Like, he's just, whatever, you know, he, I just killed somebody. Now I'm going to play guitar and move on. Like, this guy is cold-blooded. Another thing I like is that this killer, we don't get the tropey, like, oh, he had a bad upbringing. Like, he had a, a drunk dad, a whore for a mom who banged people in front of him. Nothing like that. We see his parents, and like he's neglecting them. He had a son with someone else, and now they're taking care of their grandson for him. They don't seem crazy at all, and he's just a psychopath for some reason, and we never really get a real explanation why he's so fucked up. Like These parents are normal people in a normal household. There's nothing to suggest that anything bad happened to him as a kid. We don't get any explanation, and that's... Terrific. So we don't need that, you know, Rob Zombie Halloween explanation, white trash parents, nothing like that. He wasn't raped or he wasn't bullied at school. We don't hear anything about his upbringing at all. So there's like nothing to suggest why he's killing. He's just an asshole. He's the devil. He's possessed by evil. He's like Michael Myers. He's just fucking pure evil. He's just killing to kill and rape. He's not after money. He's not taking their jewelry. I mean, the one girl's ring is clearly on her. He just chops the finger off and the ring just falls over. And, and that's how, you know, the main character, Kim, he finds that ring and that's the proof he needs to know that this is the guy that he's looking for. And he can go right to the police if he wants in that moment, but he doesn't. He goes on his rampage and I love it. So, and then what is kind of tropey is the fact that this is one, you know, the serial killer, he likes to collect stuff from his people, you know, not just their organs, um, you know, people, his victims, you know, from his victims, he collects like their purses or high heels or cell phones. He keeps them in like locked drawers. Why? Like, why keep it? You know, just burn it, get rid of it. It's like, you know, the Hills Have Eyes or Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Wrong Turn, all those movies where they keep all the victims' stuff, they keep their cars in the junkyard, they keep all their belongings and souvenirs over here, like it's trophies to them. It's a little bit of a cliche of, you know, serial killer movies, they always collect shit, and this guy is no different in that way, so. And, so, yeah, he stops him from raping this girl, he's a school bus driver, that's fucked up, just to think that the guy who's responsible for your safety and taking you from A to B is a psychopath. That's a scary thought. And I love that his win, uh, what's it called? The rear view mirror. I was blanking for a second there. The rear view mirror, it has like angel wings on the side. It's like this guy ain't no angel. He's no saint. He, it should be devil wings on his rear view mirror. And but yeah, he's about to like rape this girl and the guy stops him and like breaks his wrist and puts a GPS down his throat. And I love that every time this guy gets in a fight with Kim, Jang, he never can land a single like blow at all. So this guy is a martial artist. He kicks his ass every time. He breaks his wrist, and then he captures him again later on, and breaks it. And he like stabs him in the heel and cuts it wide open. That's a pretty gnarly scene. To, that was pretty tough to watch. And but this guy, he just keeps letting him go and they, every time he almost rapes another person every single time he keeps like almost killing or raping another person so this guy is taking major risks doing this every time he lets him go he's risking other people's lives by doing so so yeah it's like he's becoming a monster himself he's so hell-bent on revenge that he doesn't care about other people he's not like he's so focused on his plan he's not thinking outside the box like what all the other possibilities are what could happen to other people if he's too late he also gives him cash in an envelope and i'm guessing that was just for like a, a cab like you know here's some money take a cab and i'll just follow you wherever and fuck you up even more or was it like money for a medical bill like go to the hospital here you go i'll pay for it myself um but yeah that was another interesting thing like he's giving him money too i like that he's checking for a gps underneath his car because he's like there's no way this guy keeps finding me what the hell's going on he's looking underneath the car he can't find it and then we get introduced to his cannibal friends or just the one friend and this one chick and at first i thought she was like a hostage like she was there against her will but she's like all quiet she never says a word but then she starts to attack kim so clearly she's 
a psycho as well. And, of course, this psychopath, the cannibal, he likes to listen to classic, classical music, which is what they say all psychopaths usually like to listen to. So, and then he gets the screwdriver in his hand, and it's, like, stuck in his hand. He has, like, lifted up another great gore effect. And I love how he throws the hooks on the ground. It's like Home Alone all of a sudden. He's walking down the hall and steps on the hooks and then beats all three of them down. He gets, like, a lead pipe, and he's banging, like, he's bashing their heads in to the point where they're just, like, knocked out cold, almost in, like, a coma he doesn't do it enough to kill them. He knows when to stop, but he like breaks the pipe off on this guy's head. And, and I love that scene later on when he goes to interrogate the cannibal to find out where uh, Jang is and gets so pissed off. He like rips his mouth open. He's like ripping his jaw. He's like, I'm going to create a permanent smiley face on you. That was a great scene. And, a disgusting scene is when he takes this medicine to give himself like diarrhea and he shits the GPS out of him because that's the only way to get it out. I guess you can't just normally shit it out. You have to have like diarrhea to get it out of there. So he takes something and then shits it all out and we see it. We see the shit in the toilet and him digging through it and then rinsing it off and sticking the GPS down someone else's throat. Ugh. If anything is going to make you vomit in this movie, it's that. And... So, and then, this is like the turning point when he gets that GPS out. Like, the tables have turned. Now it's like he's no longer the prey. Like, he's he's preying on other people now. Like, because he can't find them no more. He goes and he gets his father-in-law, his future father-in-law and sister-in-law. And surprisingly, he actually succeeds in killing one or both of them. He bashes the one guy's head in with a dumbbell. And it looked like a little bit of CGI there. It looked kind of weird. It could have been practical, but it looked odd in one shot. And it looked because it's like all one shot, so it had to be like CGI. Because you can see like his head caving in, all in one take. So that was pretty brutal. And he's still like clinging on to life later. So I don't know. I don't know if he died at the hospital, but that was a major beatdown he got there with the dumbbell, like starry eyes. But he rapes and kills his sister-in-law, and so it's like. Is this guy really winning in the end? Like, that's the big question at the end of the movie. It's like, who won? And the the bad guy brings this up. He's like, do you think you won? I mean, you, I think you lost. Like, you, you did not succeed in breaking me. Yeah, you've caused me, like, physical pain, but that's it. Like, you never made me feel guilt. You've never made me really feel fear. Like, this guy doesn't fear death at all. And that's all this guy wants from him is for him to feel that. He wants him to fear him, and he wants him to admit what he did to his wife, but he can't get it out of this guy. So it's like he wins by killing him, but he didn't win fully because he didn't get the result he was looking for. So it's like he won and he lost at the same time. It's interesting. So, but yeah, that whole scene, like he like kidnaps him, a drive-by kidnapping, breaks the door off, comes and swings the car, like fast and furious, grabs the guy, drives off with him, takes him back to his torture dungeon, ties him up, brings his family over. So it's like finally he's reconnecting with his family, but it's the death of him. So finally seeing his family again was the thing that killed him in the end. So, but yeah, it's just the torture there, the dialogue there, the performances, it's fantastic. Just putting the cigarette out on his forehead, stabbing him in the cheek with a screwdriver, the guy starts pretend crying and weeping and begging for his life, but he is just putting on a show. He's tricking him into thinking he's winning and then just lifts up his head, shows his true face like, no, you didn't make me actually beg. That was all bullshit. I don't care if you kill me. Go right ahead. It's such a brilliant film. I just can't praise it enough. I love all that stuff. And he just keeps saying, like, you lost. You lost. And then... His head gets chopped off, and that looked fantastic. It's all like one take. There's a cut somewhere in there. It had to be, or it's CGI somehow. I don't know what they did to make this happen, but it looks fantastic. It's like you see the actor there, the real actor, and then the thing chops his head right off. Blood's shooting out, and the head rolls to his family <laughs> as they scream. And then the main character, Kim, 
he hears all of it and then takes the earbuds out and he finally has his moment to cry. I mean, he's shed tears before, but he's never really cried and like let it all out. And now that it's all over and done with, he's crying now to, for the first time since his wife died. And he's probably crying because he realizes what kind of a monster he's become and all the damage he's caused and what this revenge has done to other people. Like the pain he's caused, not only, you know, those people at the pharmacy, but the pain he's caused to his in-laws, his future in-laws. Like he could have just sent this guy to prison. He knew where he was. He found the ring. He could have turned him in. But he did all this for personal reasons because he made a promise to his dead fiance that I was going to, you know, I said I was going to make him feel everything that she felt. And I'm far from done. So, yeah, just fantastic film. That's all I got to say about it. If you haven't seen this movie, you're missing out. Check it out. It's, I think it's on Amazon, the Blu-ray, for maybe like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. I don't remember it being that expensive when I bought it. So it's out there, man. You got to check it out. I'm sure it's streaming somewhere for free or whatever price it's worth it. So just check it out. So what are your thoughts on this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, remember, it's just an opinion. No need to get butthurt about it.